What's up, people? Welcome back. Hopefully you're doing well, and welcome to the last video of 2023. This year was filled with tons of ups, downs, positive negatives, uh, successes, failures, learning opportunities. And while planning this video, I had some time to kind of reflect on this year, and uh, I can confidently say that this entire year has predominantly been very positive for me. I'm very grateful for what this year has brought me and the opportunities that I've been given, the people that I've got to meet, the experiences that I've got to uh, experience, the places I've got to see. Yeah, I, I just feel very grateful for what I was able to do this year. Sometimes by looking at your year as a whole, it can be easy to think that you didn't grow as much as you'd like to, or maybe you didn't check off every single uh, goal that you set for this year. I think it's just important to look back on your year and recognize that these small little moments of success, those small little moments of setbacks and failures, those learning lessons, all are what make up a great, productive, and positive year. So today, I want to share a few things of what I learned this past year. And um, like most of you, I definitely did not accomplish all the goals that I set out to. But I can confidently say that I did accomplish a lot of the goals that I set out to accomplish this year. And throughout the year, I set new goals. I accomplished those. I was able to uh, meet new people. I was able to visit new places. And uh, I, I think sometimes we can get sidetracked by being, you know, checking every single box off that we wanted to this year. And uh, to me, as long as we're moving in the right direction, as long as we are finding our purpose and progressing, that to me is a successful year. So the first topic is life moves quickly. I know I may sound like your grandfather or, you know, your parents when they get older, like you have no idea how quick you're going to be 80. But I guess it's kind of true because every year it seems like it goes by faster and faster. And this year I wondered how much time I spent uh, doing unproductive things i wonder how many how much time i wasted on uh, just being distracted and not focusing on things that i should have been and i think that's an important lesson for me to take away this year is recognizing how be how much better i can be at more direct focus on things that i want to be able to do i think that's a big takeaway that i learned this year was i definitely spent a lot of time being distracted i'm very easily distracted um, I can be focused on something and, you know, I hear the ding of a cell phone and uh, immediately I'm checking. And, you know, I think we're all guilty of it. I'm not perfect. I, I try my best to work on this bad habit of, you know, being less distracted, uh, going on do not disturb, putting my phone in a different place or, you know, not checking my email all the time. Uh, but I, I'm not great at it, and it's something that I'm trying to work towards and get better. But uh, that was something that I recognized this year as something that I can definitely improve upon moving forward next year. And with that, I don't necessarily just mean that I need to do a better job at just being productive for work and you know being uh, growing as a DP, my podcast, YouTube. But I also want to be more focused on. Uh, things outside of work, like being more focused with my fiance, my dog, my family, my friends, being present and not being distracted when I'm in those present moments, I think is a big thing that I actually think I did a lot better this year. When I am in those moments of family and friends and uh, work isn't the priority, make sure it stays that way and you are present. So um, I think that ties into the idea of, you know, life moving fast. You know, the people and the friends and your family that surround you, those are, that's truly what's important. You know, work, work will be there, money will be there, but the time that you spend with your friends and family, those are, th those are moments where you, you really have to cherish those. Next lesson I wanna teach is saying yes is not always a good thing. This one's a tough one, honestly, because saying no, the two letters, no, is such a luxury. No speaks to power, it speaks to you taking control of your life and your decisions. The idea of saying no and the idea of saying yes was something that I wrestled with a lot this year. And as a freelancer, you go through ups and you go through downs. You go through uh, months where you're super busy, you know, you're feeling good, you're doing great jobs, you're making great money. And then other, other months you might be really slow and you're not, you know, you're not feeling fulfilled by the, the projects you're doing. You're not, 
You're not making the same money that you did last month. There's always that juggling of emotions that you have to deal with as a freelancer. And I noticed that it isn't easy to say no to something when you're in a feeling of um, needing or wanting, if that makes sense. A lot of the times you feel obligated to say yes because you're not doing something in that moment that, that, that you feel confident enough in for you to turn that thing down. I hope I'm making sense here. I know I am in my head uh, because I, th I, I think about this a lot. So hopefully it's translating to you and hopefully that uh, you can understand where I'm coming from. I think it comes from the place of uh, maybe famine mentality potentially. For a lot of us filmmakers, for a lot of us, uh, you know, entrepreneurs or freelancers, uh, I think a lot of us come, in fr come from the place of the famine mentality of not having a lot and always wanting to maximize every opportunity that we get and maximize every, uh, every dollar that we can get, every project that we can get. Uh, we're always trying to do something. And something I noticed that was interesting was for the times that I actually said no to a project, not once did I regret it. Not once. Maybe in the moment of saying no, I second guessed myself. I wanted to call them back and be like, oh, I actually changed my mind. Yeah, I'll do it. Or, you know, you get nervous that you turn something down and nothing else is going to come. Once you make that decision, you sit on it for a little bit or the next day goes by or even the date arrives where you were supposed to do that project. Never once did I feel like, oh, I wish I was doing that project right now or I wish I was engaging in that thing that that person asked me to do. Whatever obligation that was, it doesn't even have to be work. Whatever that obligation was and I said no, I never regretted saying no. But I can count countless times that I said yes to something and when that day came that I had to fulfill that obligation, I regretted it a ton. I didn't want to do it anymore. I said yes because I noticed that within myself, I'm a people pleaser. And I heard a quote I don't know, it's not necessarily a quote, but I was listening to a podcast and this guy was talking about his friend who's a millionaire who said that he recognized about himself that he's a people pleaser. So he sets one rule and he only has one rule for himself. And that rule is he never says yes to someone over the phone or he never says yes to any obligation until he waits one whole day. And when I heard that, I thought that was brilliant because... For a lot of us, we say yes out of the fear of awkwardness or fear of letting people down. So by explaining to someone that you have a rule and you don't say yes immediately or you don't say yes over the phone, that gives you time to think about your response, but it also allows the other person to understand that you're not just shutting them out, you're actually taking the time to think about this. There are rules in life, there's rules in the world, you grew up following rules, so why is it that we can't set rules for ourselves? Next topic is trusting my ability as an artist. As a growing cinematographer, I noticed that it could be really, really difficult to fully trust your gut, trust your instincts, and commit to your own ideas. I noticed that I was kind of like a yes man in a way, where I, I would do great work, the projects would look great, the projects would end up being, you know, great, everyone was happy with it. But I lacked my own sensibilities in those projects. I lacked my identity in those projects. I don't remember what it was to be honest, but something flipped and I think it might have been halfway through this year, I completely flipped the script and now I am fully committed to trusting my instincts, trusting my gut. Even though I may have some doubt, I'm more confident in speaking up about my ideas, about my thoughts, about my uh, ideas and even if I may get turned down or, you know, my idea isn't the right idea, I'm more confident in the fact that I'm able to speak up and pitch those ideas because I, I want to have a voice. I want to be able to be a person that can make decisions. I want to also look at myself as an artist and not just a tool. So for those of you that are listening and for those of you that are cinematographers or artists and you're, you're growing, you don't necessarily feel confident yet in your own taste or your own ability. I encourage you all this year to step out of your comfort zone, to trust your gut and trust the journey that you've been on to be able to get you to where you are today. So the next thing I learned is growing three businesses at the same time is very difficult. Growing my business as a DP, growing my business as a YouTuber, and also growing my business as a podcaster has been a whirlwind of chaos in my life. And 
I wouldn't trade it for the world, but man, it is brutal. It's tough because I'm trying to grow each of these different avenues, each of these own respective businesses that I have. They all deserve my full attention and my full dedication to them. I think part of the reason why I decided to uh, step out of just being a DP and pursue YouTube, but also pursue podcasting as well, is because I have a passion for entrepreneurship. I also have a fear of lack of sustainability. And, uh, you know, there's uncertainty in the world and there's only so much we can control. Um, so for me, what I can control is what I'm doing in my life to be able to diversify myself, to be able to create as many opportunities for myself and my family as possible. So being a DP, one source of income, for me is not good enough. YouTube, that's another source of income. That's another outlet for me. And podcasting, even though yet I don't make any money on podcasting, I'm growing it. I'm passionate about it. I know it resonates with a lot of people. I, I know that it will be a, a place of revenue in the future. In the future, And I'm building all of these things. So hopefully one day I have three plus or more streams of income, but also each of these things aren't just looked at as streams of income to me. They're not just looked at as money or dollar signs. I am truly passionate about every single one of these things, which is why I think I'm able to actually do this. And I, that to me is like the secret formula. Anything that I do that revolves a idea of business or money has to be something that I'm truly passionate about. The birth of YouTube for me was really fascinating because I have a passion for filmmaking and I wanted to start my YouTube with the idea of just documenting my journey to become a DP. And if you scroll back to the beginning of my YouTube channel, you'll see me just practicing lighting, camera techniques, just trying to be a DP. But now a lot of what my YouTube channel is, is education based on personal experience. And I'm trying to bridge the gap between a traditional, actually working commercial narrative cinematographer and bringing that into the YouTube space and hopefully educate people on the practical side of being a cinematographer. And with the podcast, I also found that I have a huge passion for life and talking to people and hearing people's stories and asking questions. And uh, that's part of the reason I wanted to start the podcast because I learned so much from people that I, I didn't want to be the only one to reap the benefits of hearing people's stories and gaining access to people that uh, you know, not everyone can get access to. So that was the origin of the podcast. And uh, I can confidently say that, you know, after 30 episodes, not only has it benefited me and helped me in my life, but it's helped uh, thousands and thousands of you guys as well. And it's only going to grow. It's only going to get bigger. And I'm only going to be able to provide more valuable content from amazing guests. So one of the biggest questions I get from people is how do I actually do it all? And it, it goes right back to the idea of passion, but on a practical uh, term. Uh, what I started doing this year was actually trying to start delegating some work. So for the podcast, I have an editor that helps me edit shorts, uh, timestamps, all those things that that saves me a lot of time. And during some of these podcast episodes, I bring people along to help me light, help me monitor audio, uh, things to just like alleviate some mental capacity that I don't have to deal with. So it frees me up to do other things. So I think this year, a goal of mine is to delegate even more uh, maybe on the YouTube side, maybe even more on the podcast side so I can focus on growing as a DP as well, but also work on uh, providing you guys with the best content for YouTube and bringing on the best guests and having the best conversations. So yeah, I think my goal in 2024 is to be able to delegate even more. Last thing I want to share, which I think is really important, is be a good listener. I think naturally I've always been a pretty good listener due to my natural introvert personality. But I, uh, something I worked on this year that uh, I've learned from a lot of stoic philosophers, uh, people in podcasts that I look up to is uh, you gain so much more in life by talking less. If you want to learn more, if you want to grow, you're never going to do that by speaking. Because when you speak, you're not learning anything. You're only re regurgitating what you already know. So by being silent, by being the person in the room that doesn't speak as much and you're listening, not only are you gaining access to uh, understanding people's thoughts and even opening up your view to other people's ideas and seeing how they see the world, you get to gain valuable insight into things that people know that you might not know. You don't always need to be the center of attention in every room. And I noticed that uh, in, in certain scenarios, 
you as a person that's not speaking very often, the person that's listening, when you do speak, people will pay more attention to you because you're not the one blabbering all the time. People want to hear what you have to say because you don't speak very often or you don't say things very often. And um, I think that's a valuable tool uh, for me and I think for a lot of you to uh, maybe consider moving forward is how you can better improve your ability to be a listener in social settings or uh, in work settings or in general, just be a good listener. So these are some of the things that I learned this year, some of my takeaways. And hopefully if you are still here and you watch this entire video, that um, you can take some of these things and maybe uh, reflect on your year and how you could have improved on some of these things. Or maybe you, uh, maybe you have your own version of things that you wanted to and be improved. So let me know in the comments of things that you learned this year, things that you want to do better this year. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts and uh, yeah, what you want to be able to accomplish this upcoming year. So that's all I got for you today. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, comment. Let me know your thoughts, like I said. So have a great day, everyone. Enjoy the new year. Enjoy the holidays. I'll see you guys in the new year. Have a great day. Peace out.